I, 30s female, have been married to Buford, 40 male, for about a year. I brought little Jay and Juniper from her past marriage, and until very recently, we thought Buford had no children. We had no intentions of having more kids. As it happens, though, it turns out Buford actually does have a daughter, Marquita, teen. Unfortunately, her mom did not tell Buford about her pregnancy and ultimately moved states, so we had no idea until she reached out on Facebook. We were a little dubious, but she turned out to be right. Marquita and her mom moved back to our state in the meantime and live about 40 minutes from us. She wants visitation with Buford, which he has agreed to. There is no formal custody arrangement between Buford and mom, so it's just sporadic weekends and school holidays. Usually this is just between the two of them, but sometimes she will come to the house and has even slept over a few times. Here's my dilemma. Marquita is hearing impaired. I'm not entirely sure to what degree, but I do know she almost exclusively uses ASL. No one in our family knows ASL, but Buford has been trying to learn for her. The last time Marquita was here, he pitched the idea of us learning ASL as a family. The truth is that I don't know if that is worth the effort. Marquita is present at our house maybe once a month. I would consider it if she were going to be over more often, but I work 48 hours a week, and I just don't have time for something like this. I also know three different languages, one of which was in adulthood, and it was very difficult for me to even learn 15 years ago. So I just can't fit something like that into my life. But I told Buford that Jay and Juniper can still learn if they're interested. Since I'm not, the kids don't want to. And now Buford thinks I'm ridiculous, since I have no other way of communicating with Marquita. I told him we could work something out, but he didn't want to hear it, honestly. Marquita also thinks I should learn some basic signs, but even that would be a struggle between work and kids. Am I the idiot for not wanting to learn sign language? You are the idiot. Wow. I don't know if it's worth it. Seriously? My new stepdaughter that I didn't want has a disability, but I am unwilling to make any effort to accommodate it as such. I have taught my kids that they don't have to make any effort either. So not only are you an idiot, but you're the definition of a wicked stepmother and a terrible role model to your children. Honestly, how selfish can a person be? The stepdaughter isn't asking her to become fluent in a week. Is it really that hard to allocate even 30 minutes a week to learn some common signs that would make things easier for her and her stepdaughter? Without the technology that we have at our fingertips, there are so many ways to learn. The fact she won't even try to learn anything makes my blood boil. Like watching a five minute YouTube video on your break at work a few times a week. It's not that hard. She's just refusing to put in any effort at all. I know, right? Welcome, please, thank you, the alphabet, any of those basics. Even buying a little whiteboard to keep at your house so you can pass that back and forth writing thoughts, a gesture that you are willing to communicate, that you're thinking of her. No one is expecting immediate perfection, just friendliness. You are the idiot right now, OP, but you have the chance to turn it around. What does marriage mean to you? The man you married, the man you love, is asking you to learn ASL for his daughter. He shouldn't even have asked or suggested it. You should have been all over it. If this child doesn't mean that much to you, I understand. But your husband cares for her. And damn it, that should make you care. You married this man. That means you should support him even if it means doing something you don't want to do. That little girl is now your stepdaughter. Could you do any less to make her feel welcomed and loved? She's hearing impaired and just found out about her long-lost dad. Now she'll come to learn her stepmother couldn't be bothered to learn ASL just because she only visits once a month. Would you want your own biological children treated that way, if it was them? Good grief, you are the idiot OP. My stepmom entered my life when I was eight. I had lost my mom four months before. She and my dad met at a grief group. She lost her mom and dad had lost his wife slash my mom they got married five months in, and she threw herself into mothering me and having more kids with my dad. It always hurt her that I didn't want another mom and that I wasn't open to having that relationship with her or letting her be that to me. So I always kept her in the step-parent who comes into an older kid's life place. She wasn't quite a parent, but she was family, 
And I saw her like that because she brought my dad back to himself. Our relationship has always been complicated because of this. She never gave up hope one day. She would hear me call her mom. And I never opened up to that idea. I was never looking for that, which meant she always felt like she was competing with my mom for something she would never be able to win in. So when I had my kids, she was hurt to be Grandma Jean and hurt that I told stories about my mom to my kids. And every year on her birthday, we write letters to Grandma telling her about stuff. As a kid, suggested by my paternal grandparents, I did this and I continued the tradition with my kids. It feels like a nice way to actively keep someone's memory alive while also not going overboard and getting trapped by the grief. It also makes it something nice the kids can actively do. My stepmom never knew about the letters, found out about them on my mom's birthday this year, and she confronted me about it. She told me she thought becoming a mom would make me more drawn to her, would make me more open to the idea that I have another mom, that mom is more than just giving birth. I told her it made me feel more connected to my mom, that I was always clear the role of mom was never open to anyone else, and she can't fill a position that isn't available. I told her I cared about her, but she needed to understand that as much as I appreciate her loving my dad and me and for being great to me, she was never going to be mom. It broke her heart and she raged at me for dismissing her as a mother and for refusing to let her be what she wanted to be. I told her she was a mother. She has four children who are hers. She's just not my mother. She seems broken about it. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I'll never understand the step-parent that feels the need to replace a parent. They are not new moms or dads. They are extra moms or dads. Not new, extra. You're 100% right. It's a competition that she will never win because it's in her own mind. She needs therapy. Maybe you can suggest the two of you go together so you can talk it through with a neutral third party. You do seem to care about her. You are the idiot, OP. Stop acting like you have no idea what's going on. Say the truth you won't acknowledge. She is really broken about what you said because you reject her attempts to be a solid influence in your life. You sound like you have kept her at bay all these years for a sense of control that a child would want, and that is understandable. And now it's time to let that go. If she loves you with all her heart and takes you in as her own and tries to do right by you, is that not what a mom does? How would your mom feel about how you treat her? Would she be proud that you shoot stepmom down repeatedly? That you should keep making her feel less than? I think you're still a little child wishing for an outcome you can't have. And that's sad. Me, 35 male, and my wife, B, 33, have a beautiful daughter named Jenny, young tween. A couple of days ago, Jenny came home and went into the kitchen to make a snack. While she was making her snack, she accidentally knocked over her book bag. The book bag spilled open and in the bag, I noticed two $5 bills. Out of curiosity, I asked Jenny where the $10 came from. Jenny started stuttering and wouldn't give me a straight answer. At first, I thought that maybe she had stolen it from another student at school. I asked her again, and she eventually told me what had happened. She told me that she and her friend were talking to two boys from their class during a break at school. They were gossiping about who had a crush on who and just having general kid talk. At some point, the two boys dared Jenny to give them both a kiss on the mouth. She was a bit apprehensive, but then they each pulled out a $5 bill and offered them in exchange for the kiss. She ended up giving them both a kiss and taking the money. I was a bit flustered because I didn't know what to say. I sat her down and had a long discussion about how that contact is inappropriate for someone her age. I also told her that I'm not mad at her. I'm just protective of her. I made sure to tell her that if something like that happens again, she needs to tell her teacher, principal, or mom slash me. We hugged each other and she seemed happy that I was looking out for her. We ended up taking the money the boys gave her and donating it to a local charity. Later that day, B came home and I talked to her about what had happened. Jenny wasn't home. She was spending the night at her grandparents' house. To my surprise, B was really upset with me about how I handled the situation. This is the conversation that followed between us. B, why would you be upset about that? Me, uh, call me crazy. 
but I don't think it's appropriate for a 13-year-old to be trading physical affection for money. B. I think you're making this situation look more inappropriate than it is. Me. How? B. OP, come on. That's a little kiss. It's just kids being kids. If anything, I think it was pretty smart of Jenny to take the money. She knows her worth and to not let boys just use her for nothing in return. Me. Are you serious right now? B. I don't see the big deal. It was an innocent kiss for a few bucks. Big whoop. At this point, things continued to get more and more heated between us. I then told her that I had taken the money from Jenny and we donated it. B got angry and said that I stole money from our daughter that she earned. I told her I didn't care how she earned it. I wasn't going to allow our daughter to use that money. B claimed that I was raising Jenny in a household that teaches her to feel ashamed of her natural development. I told her that she's nuts if she feels that way. We ended up going into separate rooms and we haven't spoken to each other since the fight. I honestly don't know what to think right now. I'm at a complete loss. There is clearly a lot of tension between B and me and I don't want Jenny to be caught in the middle of us fighting. Yup, not cool. You are best to nip this one off as soon as possible. Lots of things start off innocent, which at the moment this most likely is. What happens if word gets around and other boys offer her money for kisses? What if older boys here and are offered money for kisses? At what point is this problematic? If she starts to do this type of thing regularly, does it transition to other acts? I believe your wife is thinking about this as a one-off, whereas you're looking at the big picture. The two of you need to discuss this more and get on the same page. I gotta say, I'm furious that you donated her money. She did something that she was probably very uncomfortable with. And now because of you, it was completely for nothing. You can't take back the fact that she kissed those boys, but you took away her reward for it. Teens are stupid. They're going to explore. They're going to make mistakes. All you can do is tell her to love herself and take care of herself, but you don't get to tell her what to do with her body. 100% on B's side. Wow, what an amazing event to show your wife's true colors. Hey man, it's better you know about certain things. As for your daughter, I mean, it is what it is. Your wife shows her loose morals here, and it looks like your daughter is following suit. You had a truth bomb hit you square in the chest about your wife. Man, how does that feel, bro? Legit question. I really have no idea. My reaction is to try and forget the whole thing and just file this away in the to be determined part of your brain. I'd have a problem with it too, man. But, and I think this is pretty sad, but in the Western world, you have no say about how females, even ones you fathered, raised, and married. My son, Tween, recently started receiving an allowance from me since his dad is unemployed and my son likes to have his own money to spend on stuff he wants. The problem is that I accidentally discovered that my husband has been taking the money from our son to buy his own stuff like cigarettes or a drink. He'd approach our son whenever he has money and tell him he'll buy him what he wants but ends up spending the money on something else. Something for him, not our son. Our son obviously cannot drive by himself and buy his own stuff, so my husband offers to buy stuff for him using, of course, his allowance. I'm a nurse working long shifts most of the time, so I'm not always home. Every time our son wants something, my husband would be like, hey bud, you want a few bags of Doritos for you and the other kids? I'll stop by the supermarket and get them for you then. That will be X dollars. Then our son gives him the money but never receives his Doritos. Rinse and repeat. This went on for two months till my son told me. It turns out my husband asked not to tell mommy because she'd get mad at him and he'd be in trouble and promised to get him stuff but he never does. I had a big fight with my husband about it. He said it wasn't a big deal since he always gets our son the stuff he wants 99% of the time. He told me to consider this gas money since he drives many kilometers to the supermarket to buy what our son wants. I shamed him for taking advantage of our son and taking the money that was meant for him and said he was acting like a thief but worse when stealing from his son. I then said I wouldn't be handing our son any allowance anymore and my husband said I was overreacting and punishing our son for no reason. I said I'll handle our son's needs from now on but he argued that I can't when I'm busy working all the time. 
I said it was none of his business and walked out of the room. He kept nagging me, saying my son would resent me if I stopped handing him money. But I refuse to engage any further in the argument and the guilt tripping. He keeps calling me heartless and financially controlling to take away the allowance. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. And I think your problem is way deeper than the allowance issue. What your husband is doing is a real breach of trust. The father is stealing from his own son to buy cigarettes. My blood pressure would be through the roof. Not the idiot. This is very concerning behavior. He's stealing from your son, having your son lie to you, and now he's harassing and trying to manipulate you. I understand that this post is just a snapshot of your relationship, but is this honestly the marriage you want? Is this the role model you want for your son? I hope you don't have an account in your kid's name your husband can access. My 28 female, wife 28, had twins a week ago. Even though we knew twins might come early, it was before her due date. Everything happened so quickly she didn't have an epidural, but she came through like a champ and everyone is okay. Because of the global issue protocols at the hospital, my wife and babies got sent home fairly quickly since all were healthy. My wife's family lives in another state. When we got home from the hospital, her mom, 49, dad, 54, and sister, 29, showed up just after we got home. They flew out after we told them about the birth. We didn't have a heads up, but her mom said that they wanted to help. Her mom said that they were planning to come closer to the due date for the birth, but the babies were early. I have kicked them all out after realizing it wasn't working. Her mom and sister's version of helping was to monopolize the babies. They complained if my wife took them to feed or hold and wanted them to sleep in their bedrooms instead of the nursery. If the babies were sleeping, they woke them up so they could hold them. My father-in-law just watched TV all day. They ate our food without replacing it, made meals for themselves, but not us, didn't put away their dishes, put their own laundry with ours, and didn't do any. Mom and sister complained we wouldn't let them take pictures to post on Instagram. They were loud when my wife was trying to rest. Finally, her parents asked my wife to make the food because they were holding the babies. Normally, my wife is very good with boundaries for her family. There is a reason she moved 1,200 miles away and hasn't been back to visit them in 10 years and why invites to visit us and emails to them are rare. But I could see how exhausted she was. They were upsetting her and causing more work. So I told them to leave and said that they couldn't stay here or visit for the future because we have too much on our plate. They accused me of playing favorites because I didn't say the same for my family. But, number one, no one from my family came over until we invited them. Two, my relatives don't stay long and leave on their own when they see my wife or the babies needing bonding, sleep, or quiet. Three, they don't make a mess or take over the house. Four, they are bringing us meals and doing chores without interfering. My aunt came and did our laundry last night while we were sleeping, and we had no idea until the next day. I would throw my own family out if they acted like my in-laws. My in-laws apparently didn't buy return tickets because they planned to stay for a long time. I've blocked their numbers and emails because they were leaving us angry messages. Normally, I'd let my wife handle this, but she doesn't need the stress and hasn't objected. She is more arrested and says she feels better, and that's all I want. Not the idiot, and many folks would be wishing for a partner like you to provide support and boundaries. It's one thing to invade someone's space, but be extra helpful to the point where it balances out, but a whole other thing to get in the way of bonding and creating work or expense where there should be none. You did the right thing. Not the idiot, you just had a new baby. That's not the time to be playing host to uninvited guests. It's time for your wife to be resting and you and your wife to care for and bond with your new babies. Not to mention how unsafe it is in the current situation for them to be traveling and to be around an infant with no immune system. Good on you for standing up for your wife and kid. Good luck.